Okay, I'm back. Now, as I was saying at the end of part four, the reason Billy couldn't absorb or couldn't take the Gold Ranger powers is because he ended up absorbing a lot of negative proton energy or something during the command center's explosion. My other guess is also the fact that he kind of affect, might have affected him. The energy might have also come from the fact that he was the first to grow, if you will, back to his normal age during the whole time incident. Well, anyway, Trey of Triforia and his three personalities says that they got to transfer it to somebody worthy of being the Gold Ranger. Now, now at first, you would think, okay, they're probably going to give it to Tommy's brother because Tommy was, Tommy's brother was introduced earlier on in the series, I believe. You think, oh, they're going to give it to Tommy's brother. No, they don't give it to Tommy's brother. Instead, they give it to another kid. Instead, they give it to a returning character. That's right. For some reason, I don't know exactly how it occurred, but the writers, apparent, the writers and producers apparently were able to get Austin St. John, that's right, Jason's character, to return to the show. So Jason ends up returning and becoming the Gold Ranger. Now, of course, some people might say this was a fan service because a lot of people missed characters like Jason and the, the new characters characters coming in really didn't have that same mystique that the originals did but Jason did come back back and assume the Gold Ranger powers for the later half for the last half of the series at least until the final two episodes or so oh we had to give the Gold Ranger powers back to Trey because they were he because his body was sort of rejecting them and he couldn't handle it or I guess his body couldn't handle it and the piles were rejecting. Sort of like something with Tommy and his Green Ranger powers as they were starting to weaken. So anyway, during all this, we're also introduced to uh, another villain, another son, if you will, King Mondo's. Now his first son is Sprocket. His youngest son is Sprocket. His other son is Prince... Gasket, who married a girl that was a who married a female robot that was, I guess, part of the enemy family. If you kind of like the rival, who's the daughter of a rival family to Mondo's. So anyway, after Mondo is temporarily destroyed during the first and the later half of the first season, first half of the season, and early second half of the season, Prince Gasket kind of takes control. And then after Prince Gasket gets defeated, not destroyed, but defeated, a monster that Rita uh, has Goldar and Retor send to uh, the Machine Empire to try to blow him up, Louis Kaboom, ends up assuming control as well. And it's only for a short time until Mondo shows up. And yes, during this, oh yes, and during the later half of the first, later first half of the season, that's why during the later first half of the season, Godar and Ritor, thanks to Zed and Rita, end up getting the memories back. Now, after that, after that whole situation, we also get um, another episode in, during the series, during the season, and I don't know if it, I think it's around the first half, I believe, towards the later half of the, towards the, later half of the first half of the season or towards the end of the first half of the series uh, season and basically towards the first towards the end of the first half uh, we get a three episode letter that starts with a dear I mean, three episode episode three part episode I should say that starts with a dear John letter from Kimberly to Tommy that's right and I saw I, I did see a little bit of this episode and I thought oh great because it said in the credits guest starring Amy Jo Johnson, I'm thinking, oh great, Kimberly's back. But apparently she only appears in flashbacks. Uh, basically what happened uh, in this, I think this was going towards, like I said, the end of the first half of the se season. Uh, Kimberly writes Tommy a Dear John letter and tells him that she has found somebody else and that she doesn't want to hurt his feelings and that she has to break it off with him. Now, someone like Lynn Cara, uh, when he uh, watched this and was reviewing it, he said that despite the fact that the, the producers and the writers gave her such a great send-off in the third season, 
with those ten episodes that they have the gall, if you will, to have her just give him a dear, write him a dear John letter and break up with him off screen instead of doing it on screen. And this did upset a lot of fans from what I heard because the Kimberly Tommy relationship was one of the reasons people liked watching Power Rangers. But of course, some also feel like Lynn Cara that the producers and writers did this because they wanted to push a Tommy cat relationship. Anyway, anyway, after all that, we get towards the end of, of the series, and the Zeo Rangers end up finally defeating Mondo once and for all. After Trey of Triforia, after he gets back his Gold Ranger powers, tells them that the only way they're going to be able to defeat King Mondo is to grow themselves to monster si to giant size as well. And that's what they do. They end up growing to giant size. And they end up defeating King Mondo. Mondo. Oh. And then R Zed and Rita end up blowing up the rest of the machine fam family by giving get a gasket, by giving Sprocket a present, thinking, hey, you know, everything's cool. We surrender. You're superior. Next thing we know, Boom! There goes the Machine Empire, or at least the leaders. Excuse me for a second, my hand hit the mic there. But anyway, that's exactly what happens. And thus, that leads us into Turbo. And Turbo actually starts out as a movie for the Power Rangers. That's right. And, you know, believe it or not, it's not the first time a series or a franchise has had a movie which introduces us to a new side of the franchise, or introduces us to a franchise, period. I mean, let's take a look at Transformers the movie back in 1986. That introduced us to a whole new cast of characters that we got to see in the third and fourth seasons. Now, Turbo basically is, well, many consider probably the worst thing that ever happened to Power Rangers. And even to many, including Lin Cara, was one of the death nails, or near death nails, for Power Rangers. The reason being is this. Power Rangers was basically, nobody knew about this until you look at online, but apparently during the later half of the third season, which was still Mighty Morphin, uh, the Rangers franchise, the, Rangers, the Power Rangers series itself overall was starting to decline. It was starting to fail. Now, I'm pretty sure if you're a Sonic the Hitchhawk Saturday AM fan, you're thinking, wow, comma's a bitch, you know, isn't it? But anyway, the ratings started to decline. And the producers and the writers did everything they can to keep it alive. And as soon as they did Turbo, a lot of people knew this could be the death nail. Well, basically how this happens is it starts out with a movie. Now... Here's the thing, they have to, well basically they have to rescue the friends Jason and Kimberly who do return in this film, not as rangers, but as, pe as prisoners of the new villainous Divatox, and they basically got to rescue the friends, and as well as this wizard, and then this wither, wizard named Lyrico, oh, from Divatox, and also prevents him from trying to marry or resurrect this being, I can't, can't think of his name, but Malachor, resurrect this Malachor being. being. So what they have to do, basically, is go to this island. But the only way they can go to this island, I guess according to Zordon, is they have to get new powers. Now a lot of people feel as though this was stupid, seeing as though, oh, it's perfectly, seeing as though it was stated in Zeo that the Rangers' Zeo powers always increase in time. And I'll get back to that when I return. 